Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. So in previous sessions, we have seen how we can set up Spark on Windows or set up our Spark related IDE so that we can run our applications on Windows. Now here we have a quick demo on setting up Spark as a standalone cluster on Ubuntu machines and then trying out Spark way of working for which we need at least two machines. And here I have Ubuntu machines set up UM1 and UM2 just to give insights on how my machines look. So if I look in my ETC host, I have the IP address of multiple machines. So I can ping one machine to other machine by just doing a ping UM2 and that should work fine. Similarly, I have also set up SSH access for these machines. Both of the machines have HDU as the user and I can just do a SSH UM2 and that logs me into the second machine without a password. Similarly, I can check the same thing from my second machine by doing a SSH UM1 and that works fine too. So we need two machines which can ping each other, firewall disabled, able to SSH each other so that we can set up a standalone cluster of Spark. How do we do it? So first thing is we will have to download the Spark related tar file. Now I can just go to Google and I can type in Spark 2.2.1 download. Now that's what I'm interested in. And this takes you to Spark release 2.2.1. However, here it shows you the latest release is 2.4 and then 2.4.2. So what we can do is we can go to archives. So I can basically look at existing versions. Now here I can click on download and this shows me a Spark release and also pre-built for Apache Hadoop. Now what we can also do is we can go to release archives for an older stable version. I click on this and here I have Spark 2.2.1. Now I can click on this and we can either install something which is not already built or we can download this one which is Spark 2.2.1 bin Hadoop 2.6.tgz. So you click on this link and then save this file, which I have already done. And here, if you see in my machine, I have home HDU downloads, which has my different packages, which I've downloaded. Also, if you notice, I have downloaded JDK 8, so you can check on my machines. So apart from machines being able to ping each other and being able to do a SSH, we also need machines to have Java, which is already installed. Once this is done, now I have my Spark related package. So I go into user local directory and then you can give a command here that is sudo tar xvf home hdu downloads and then give your spark package. Now once you do this, this will untar the spark directory and create a directory in my user local location. If you see here, this is the directory which is created, but you also see that there is a spark link which is pointing to spark. Now that is because if you would want to work on a newer version of spark, you could just do the same thing for newer version and then make your link pointing to the newer version of spark. How do you create a link? You can just say sudo ln minus s. You can give your spark directory and then you can create a link. So I've already created a link and my spark path will then become this. Now what do we do with this? Once we have done this, once we have created a link, we can go into the bash file of my user. And if you carefully see here, I have given my Java path so that I can execute Java related commands. And I have also added my Spark related path here, which says user local Spark. So in case you would be changing your Spark version to a latest one, you will not have to change things in your bash file. Only thing you will have to do is unlink the existing Spark link and create a new link to your newer version. So this is done on this machine. And now I can basically be using Spark. Now, before doing that, we can go into user local Spark 
and this has different directories. So if you look in bin, these has the binaries programs like your PySpark, your Spark Shell, Spark SQL and Spark Submit, which we will see how we can use here. If you look in SBIN, it has other startup scripts to start your history server or to start your master or worker processes. If you look in conf, this has your config directories. Now here by default, you might see spark minus default dot conf dot template. I have renamed that to dot conf. Slaves template has been renamed to slaves. So let's look into this. So I can go into conf and then I will look in spark default conf. Now here based on our setup. Now here we intend to set up a Spark standalone cluster that is without Hadoop, but I would want to have a Spark standalone distributed cluster. So I have uncommented this property which says spark.master and I say Spark and I also mentioned that my master will run on this machine which is um1. Spark event log dot enabled is true because we would want to track the events. I have mentioned a directory. So this is a local directory in user local spark and we will have to create it. It talks about the default serializer. It talks about the driver memory, which was by default five gigabyte. I have reduced it to two gigabyte based on my machine configuration. You have Java options. And then if you intend to run a history server so that whenever your Spark applications complete, you will have your application stored in history server. I have given the log directory, which is user local Spark and then application history. And this also needs to be created. We have Spark history provider for the class, which takes care of history server and the update interval of looking for your applications. So this is what we have in our Spark default. And if you look in slaves, I have given the machines where I would want my worker processes to run. So that is UM1 and UM2. Now, once you have made your changes in your Spark default conf and slaves file, what you can simply do is SCP assuming that whatever was done on this machine that is untarring your spark directory creating a link updating your bash RC and renaming your config files same steps need to be done on the second machine and your second machine would also be prepared to be used for your spark cluster so once you have both the machines which can ping each other which can ssh each other both of the machines have java both of the machines have the sp same spark version downloaded and the basic setup done i can just easily copy the spark related config from here into my other machine that is sdu um2 and then i can give a path which is user local spark conf and in this way i don't need to edit my config files again and similarly i can even copy the slaves file this is all we need to basically have our spark standalone cluster now since we have updated our bash rc we can give our spark command from anywhere we have set up our config files so i can just do a start minus all dot sh and that based on my config files based on the directories which are mentioned it will start my master process and my worker process on both the machines so here we have a spark standalone cluster which has two workers and one master now we can always go to the browser interface and we can check for the spark ui which should be available by typing in http slash slash my master and then the port is 8080 so this shows that i have a spark master running i have two worker processes right now there are no applications which are running but my spark ui is already available when we start using spark either by spark shell or pi spark or even spark submit we will see our applications getting populated here additionally we can also start the start history server by just saying start history server dot sh and that will start my history server once this is done we have a history server also running and we can go back and then we can again pull out the history server user interface by giving in the 
port, which is default 18080. So I have a Spark standalone cluster with one master, two workers, and also a history server, which is running. Once we have this, we can try working with Spark, either with Spark Shell or PySpark, or if you have packaged your application as a jar using SBT or Maven, you could also use Spark Submit. Additionally, you could also use Spark SQL. So to work with Spark, I would just say Spark Shell on one of my machines, both my machines which have worker processes running, we can start our Spark Shell on any of these machines. Remember here our Spark will rely on the storage of these machines, that is the file system because it does not have any Hadoop or distributed file system. We have started our Spark Shell and that shows Spark Context which is available as SC, Spark Session is available as Spark. So to work with Spark Core and RDDs, we would be using Spark Context and if you intend to work with Spark SQL, that is data frames and data sets, you can be using Spark. Let's try a quick simple example. So I'll say val x sc dot text file and now I would want to point it to a file. So I will say the complete path. Remember I'm giving the Spark command from my home directory. So I will have to say user local Spark and then I can point to a file which is existing here. And this is what I would want to use to do some processing. We are using the first step here wherein we are using a method of Spark context which will not relate in any evaluation and it will just create an RDT. Now we are using the Scala's way. So let's create one more variable and then we can do some transformation on it by saying to upper case. I would just want to convert the content into upper case and this is again a transformation. So that will just create an RDT. Once this is done, we can invoke an action to basically see some results. So I could just simply do a collect, which is an action, and this action will trigger the execution of DAG, which starts from the farthest RDD, that is the first step where your file is loaded into RDD. Now, once we do this, we should be able to see our result, and that basically is execution of DAG. So from the time we have used a text file which is a method of Spark context to we did a transformation and till we invoked an action becomes my one job. Now if I would do y dot count which is again a different action this will trigger the execution of DAG right from the beginning that is a c.txt file where the data will again be loaded in RDD a map transformation will happen and then you will have a count. Now we can always see this in the Spark UI by just going in here and just doing a refresh. So that will show me that there is an application which is running via Spark Shell. It has utilized three cores. It has utilized memory per executor one gigabyte. And we can click on this application which shows that it used both the workers one core and one GB on this worker and two cores and memory on this worker. I can click on application detail UI wherein I can see what are the actions I invoked. We also see the number of tasks which are run and that is because every RDD which is created by default is having two partitions and for each partition you would have one task. Well we can change the partitions and many more things can be done but that you can learn in later sessions. Here we have two jobs one ended with collect and one ended with count. Now I can click on collect and I can see the DAG visualization which tells me we started a text file, we did a map and finally we did a collect. It shows that everything was done in stage zero. That is just one stage. I can click on count and that again shows me the DAG visualization which is a different stage, a different job ID which started with text file, map and then we did a count. If you would want to see more details, you can always use these tabs to look at different stages within your application. If you were doing some caching, looking at environment variables and also to see how many executors were used including the one for the driver on which nodes these executor ran, how many cores, how many tasks were run, was there any shuffling involved and so on. So this is how I have used Spark Shell that is an interactive way of running my application and since we have a Spark UI we can always look at applications when they have run and we can always drill down and know more details. 
now since my application is completed i can do a refresh on history server but that does not show anything because when we started a spark shell it started an application and that application is still in running status if you see here under running applications so this is how we use spark shell on a standalone spark cluster now we can just do a colon quit and that takes me out of spark shell similarly if i would want to work on pi spark that is python's way of working with spark i can just type in pi spark which should bring my python shell and then i can continue working with spark and again go back and look at my ui while my pi spark comes up i can go here since i quit my spark shell i can just do a refresh to see if my application is yet coming up in history server it might take some time and you can always go back and look at incomplete applications or wait till your application is populated in history server now if i do a refresh here on spark ui it says this application was completed it says finished and then now we have started pi spark so it has started a new application pi spark shell and that is in running status we can come back here and now we have our python's way so i can do the same thing which i did in scala using sc dot text file i will point it to a file which exists in user local spark read me dot md so that's the file which i'm interested in now this would have created an rdd which we can confirm by just typing in x now i can create a different variable and i can say i would want to do a transformation of map now in case of python when you use anonymous functions or when you want to apply some functions to your transformations you use lambda functions so we say lambda line and then i would say what i want to do to the line i will say i will use a inbuilt uppercase upper function which should convert my content into uppercase but as of now this is a transformation so it only creates an rtd to see the result i can do a y dot collect and that should bring up my result now in case if it says the file does not exist that is because there was a typo here and we can repeat this step so let's bring up here again x and i can give the right name of the file i can do a transformation and finally i can see the result so this is using PySpark on a standalone Spark cluster, which is working without Hadoop, which has two worker nodes and one master node. We can always come and do a refresh here to look at more details. So we have our application. We can click on this again. Similarly, like we did for Scala application detail UI, I see my application ended at collect. It ran two tasks and I can look at my DAG. So this is how we can use Spark spark shell or pi spark thank you and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here